Hey gang, um, how we doing today? Finally got around to getting to this demo and just gonna get through it pretty quick. Um, but we want to talk about the project at first so we can relate to relate what we're looking at to what we're thinking about. Um, so improvised with repetition. So what we're doing is making portraits. Um, could be of ourselves, could be of someone we know, could be of a made up person. Um, but we're constructing these portraits a little bit differently, um, mostly with non-traditional mark making. Um, and so in this slide, you'll see that um, all of these artists um, are working in that vein. So they, although it may not seem obvious in some of the images we're going to be looking at today, although they do um, work with portraiture, they, they're also um, not concerned with representation, more concerned with these other ideas um, that we were kind of talking about in class that affect our perceptions and subjectivities like gender, class, um, race, sexuality, emotions, um, all of these kind of things that we don't necessarily talk about or bring to the light in public, but are definitely things that are probably even more so important than what uh, sits at the surface. So this first artist we're looking at right now is Wangechi Mutu. Um, she's a Kenyan artist that's based in New York. Um, she works um, with multimedia, so she does painting, drawing, collage is what we're looking at in this first slide. Um, and for her, uh, she kind of works from this field of thought called Afrofuturism, um, in which the idea is that uh, we, as as African Americans or Blacks in the world, can imagine ourselves as non-human since we get looked at that way. It's like, how can we envision ourselves? How can we reimagine who we are? Um, how can we reimagine our bodies? Um, our emotions, our, our physical state, how can we reimagine these things um, to feel more human, for lack of a better word, or to feel more like ourselves, like who we really are, like who you are. Um, and so she has this practice where, she's where she collages on different surfaces. So in this particular one, she's collaging on top of a uh, medical image, medical illustration. Um, and she's, she's taking body parts from different uh, people and different magazines and, and kind of putting them together to be like, yo, what if, what if we looked at ourselves in, the, in, these, in these ways rather than um, the ways that like Eurocentric ideals have kind of held us to? What if we held ourselves to a different standard? And so that's what you see in this, this second slide too, uh, where she uses more of her watercolor and ink kind of painting technique come out a little bit more here. Um, another thing about her figures kind of sit in these otherworldly environments. Um, so that's something to know as you, if you want to keep researching her work, if you're thinking about um, putting portraits of individuals in, in strange spaces, she's a, is a really good artist to look at. Um, and even, though, even how she's collaging these different a sheets of paper that she's painted on and drip and put drops of ink on even though even how she's putting these scraps together to construct these bodies is just really something it's just something interesting to think about um when you're thinking about constructing a portrait or constructing a person the next person we're looking at is willie cove um i'm not sure where willie cove's from but anywho uh he's an artist who throughout his career has been prominent for using the iron in his work. And so uh, with the iron being his motif, he uh, typically um, pulls imagery from um, like Kenyan quilts, um, slave ships, um, African-American past, uh, uh, images of domesticity in the past, um, so he, he really just uses this iron motif to kind of um, have a conversation with the present and the past 
in the future um, about like what black life is, what it's been presented to uh, the world as, um, and how it can be transformed. So like we're using this one unit that's an iron, um, but expanding that unit um, significantly to create something massive. And that's what he's doing in his prints. And so this is what we're looking at here. And this is another print. Uh, well, this is a print, and the other one was a, a iron press, where, where he's using this same iron motif, but to create another form. And so that's something I want you all to be thinking about as well, as you're working on these projects. Is um, I know that I'm some, like you telling yourself, I know I'm supposed to create a system of of mark making uh, and 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 come up with my own ways of making not traditional marks, but how can we use that method? Um, and, and build upon it so that it can be transform, transform, transformative and transform into something else. Um, the next artist we're looking at is Tomasi Jackson. Um, and Tomasi is a really good artist to look at if you are not into, I'd say, the kind of like traditional drawing method where it's like picking up a pencil or pen or whatever and drawing, making lines on a page. Um, and, and, and I think this is drawing too, where she's kind of slicing through, um, um, the present, the past, um, his historical archives, newspaper clippings, photographs that she takes. She's literally cutting through these, this archive that she's built, um, and arranging them in a way that's aesthetically pleasing. Um, and to Tamashi, there is a... In the way that Joseph Albers, I don't know if you're all familiar with this, but just look up Joseph Albers color theory and the way that Joseph Albers talks about color theory is the way that people talk about racism in America. And so it's Tutamashi doing this work is um, having that conversation about systemic of systemic racism with like actual events that are happening and, and impacting people of color. So what we're looking at now is an image called Eris's where um, there was a community of a uh, big community of, of blacks in Central Park Village. And before it was called Central Park, it was called Seneca Village. Um, but due to some um, policy, and I don't know the name of it, uh, that those those people got moved out of the village and now and what's now become Central Park has been Central Park. So. She does a really good job at kind of pinpointing um, points in history, specific moments in history that she wants to talk about. Um, same here when she talks about Mario all along with Davis versus County Board, School Board, where she's, um, and I'm not familiar with the story, actually. I'm not even going to get into that. But kind of the same, the same theory. There's this color theory applied, aesthetic applied to um, this, this, um, this other aesthetic that relates to systemic racism. The next artist we're looking at is Shakaya Booker. And, and Shakaya Booker is a formal abstract abstractionist, if I, would, if I would put it any other way. So like the other artists we've kind of talked about have this kind of content related to the choices that they're making in their images. And Shakaya is only concerned with texture and form. So these are her works on paper, but she's known for her sculpture um, work with tires and how um, she kind of tears and rips and shreds tires and transforms them um, into these other um, entities. Um, so get a chance to look up her sculpture when you, when you can. But in these particular prints that we're looking at, their collages, where she's drawn on several pieces of paper and, and cut them up and and kind of have displayed them for us as if she would in her um, sculptures. And that's the same thing we're looking at here. Um, and so, so that's something that we can think about too. Like what if, um, and another artist that does this is Troy Michie, if you all, like, if you all want to look him up. Um, what if we, what if we drew a portrait or painted a portrait in the way that it, um, then the way that they the person would look um, if we were drawing them or painting them as a representation um, but then went in and cut and sliced and divided 
that portrait and arrange it in a different way? What what kind of what does what connotations does that does that give? What does that mean? Um, what kind of internal work are you doing there? The next artist we're doing looking at is Betty Sar. Um, Betty's dope. Um, she's a assemblage artist who's uh, she's a badass. Like she's she's known for critiquing uh, America's portrayal of blacks. Um, and I think that that is a, a good critique because a lot of times we get fed images in society um, and just kind of accept them for what they are and not question them. Um, Betty's work does a really good job at uh, questioning the images that um, we kind of hold close to us. Um, so why, so and, and that's why I like Betty's work. So. Uh, she makes a lot of comments on that, but she puts together a lot of materials, does a lot of drawing, does a lot of found sculpture work. Um, and yeah, so I'm just showing you all a couple images of Betty's work, well, obviously. And what, the other thing I like about Betty's work is that there's always this aspect of, of her work where she talk, she's talking about the human body, but um, the whole human body isn't present. And, and it's kind of leaves you with this eerie feeling of, was the body here? Is the body whole? Um, and I think that those are good questions to think about um, when we are even existing in the world or, or thinking about art or thinking about representation. Um, what is it about the body that that we, what is it about the body that we want to to use for our, the the images or the pieces that we're making? The next artist is David Hammonds. Um, he is a artist from the Midwest, but based in LA, I think. Actually, we don't know where David Hammonds is. But what we're looking at now are his uh, a couple of his body prints. We're looking at two body prints where he um, covered his body in oil and um, literally kind of like pressed it onto these large sheets of paper um, and then once the oil dried he kind of brought out some of the impression from the oil with graphite um, and david hammonds is known for kind of like this pulling the rug from underneath you type of art making technique um, where like aesthetically the informally the pieces is amazing but you you're trying to figure out like how how did you get from A to Z? And that and that's the, the 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 really good thing about looking at David's work is you learn a lot from trying to figure out what's in between A and Z. And here's another print. Um, and a lot of, a lot of David's work is punny, um, plays on uh, terms or phrases, um, stereotypes, archetypes. Um, so, I don't know if you're all familiar, but Spade, some people, well, I don't know when, way back when, black people were uh, referred to as Spades. And I mean, and he's the kind of critic that embraces, um, I guess, the negative trope and kind of turns it on his head. He's, he's, not, he's known for that, and that's why I really like David's work. Next artist is Deborah Roberts. Um, she's based in Texas. Um, she's a collage and painter. Um, so this is actually the new phase of Deborah's career. She didn't start off making these collages. She actually started off making like illustrative type paintings, which are like really good, like Norman Rockwell esque. But she's making these like dope ass collages now that that still kind of relate to her older work, but is a little bit more intentional. It's like you see the little girl with big hands. She kind of does these juxtapositions that you don't necessarily see coming. Um, which um, kind of like tells you a lot about what she's trying to convey in the image. And the last artist is Marlene Dumas. Uh, she's a South African based artist um, who works in painting and drawing. Um, and she doesn't work from life at all. Though she does use some photo references, she doesn't draw from them. She kind of just has them in her head and, and attacks the image. Um, and I really like Marlene's work because it, it's really informed how I approach drawing, as you probably saw in uh, the demo.
Uh, but that's it. All right, gang. Let me know if you all have any questions.